You want to know the best settings for your iPhone to take astro photos like this one here? Watch this video. There are three phases to getting this image at the end of the day. One is planning, two is shooting, and three is editing. First is the planning. There's no point doing this sort of photo, getting that nice galactic core with a good subject in the foreground if you don't plan it, because that galactic core, it moves. Southern Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere, it moves all year round. So you need to plan where it's going to be for the shot that you want. And that photo, or that uh, windmill right there, that's what we're shooting. Luckily for us, there are tools around already that help us work out when we need to come here, what time of year, what time of the day to shoot this subject with the galactic core in the space that we want it. When we look at the frame that's behind us here with the windmill here, I want that galactic core coming down on an angle like this. The best tool that I've ever used and I continue to use it day in, day out is photo pills. You see, the main thing that we want to avoid here is light pollution, that is the moon, cars like this one that's about to go past now because when we're doing this at night time these cars will light up everything that's in the foreground when cars are doing that uh, it tends to ruin the photo this is photo pills and what we're looking at here is the time right now of where the galactic core is and you can see it's way up above the ground there now what we've got to do is move forward or backwards in time i'm keeping an eye on the time in the top left hand corner now i think that there is probably the sort of framing that I want, but I need to be further this way. So we can see by that, I'm gonna to need to be here about three o'clock in the morning. So not much sleep for me today. The Photo Pills app will also tell you where the moon phase is and you want the moon to be, well, to be honest with this sort of photo, you want it to be gone. You don't want any moon in the air at all. Sometimes the moon can be quite helpful. If the galactic core is over this side, then we want, to for, we want to paint the foreground with some light, but there's just too much of it. You're doing a big open sort of panoramic sort of photo. You, you wait till the time of night that the moon is very small and it's about to set. So come back at that time of the month. But I know where the moon is up to. I know what's going on as far as when that moon phase is. And right now it doesn't rise until about 5.30 in the morning. So we'll be right. All I need to do now is wait until three o'clock in the morning get myself out of bed, come out here and uh, take that photo. It's funny, you know, when, uh, when I was running workshops doing astrophotography, people used to say to me, aren't you worried that people are gonna steal your ideas and go and make their, their own money doing this sort of photography? And I would go, if you want to get out of bed at three o'clock in the morning, day in, day out, or earlier, and have broken sleep for months of the year to achieve what we do, Good on you, you deserve it. When you have a foreground subject when you're doing astrophotography, there's two ways to deal with it. One is to light paint it, and I did that in a video really recently in a really good way of doing light painting of a foreground subject. And the second way is to silhouette it in the night sky. And those subjects, you've got to choose carefully. And that's because those subjects need to be at a height that's going to be comparable to where the galactic core is. So if we're here, the subject needs to be here and the core up here. And what we've got tonight does that really well. There are obviously a number of ways to do what we're doing here tonight. Um, what we're showing you here though is the most basic way to edit your photos so they go from this and they end up looking like this. You're going to need a couple of things to take this sort of a photo. You're gonna need a tripod. This is the Freewell tripod. Absolutely rate this for mobile phone photography. And up on top here, you can see here, I've got the Ulanzi MagSafe phone holder. I'll link both of these down in the description. Other than that, that's it. Just get your phone, off you go. The subject that we're shooting tonight is this windmill. I came out earlier to have a look and see how it's going to be uh, composed and it will work well. You certainly can light this sort of a subject as well, and I think I've done this one in the past where I have lit it, but there's a gentle breeze blowing at the moment, 
and the windmill is turning. So we don't want a constant light. You would use a strobe or something like that if you wanted to freeze it, but that's not what I want to do here tonight. I want to actually capture that light, that uh, windmill turning. And if I do this right, what I should get is the galactic core coming up, the windmill standing vertically, obviously, and below it on the horizon is a town called Echuca. It's about 60 kilometers away and it should give me a little bit of a glow on the horizon. You may see from that uh, drone footage, <laughs> I'm on a road and I was just about to set up to take the photo and there's a car coming. So we'll get off the road and we'll wait. Pretty funny, I, I tried to take a photo <laughs> while, that, while that car was going past. It didn't work out too well. <laughs> All right, let's put this on the tripod and we'll get it composed. It actually doesn't look too bad right where it is. Just looking to get the horizon flat. I'm fairly sure we're good there. We'll turn Pro Max on or Max Raw, I think it's called. Raw Max these days. I don't know why they changed that. I'm not sure. You can see what I'm doing there. I'm just going to the night mode, making sure it's all the way to 30 seconds. That's it. There's nothing else you need to do with the iPhone. Push the start button and wait. That photo is done. And it looks as good as I would expect it to look. Uh, got a good glow on the horizon from the town, Achuca. The galactic core is sitting nicely. Do I want to bring it any closer? Probably not. As I'm looking at this photo, I'm looking at where the windmill is and looking at where the galactic core is. And they're both kind of central. It kind of works. I am going to do a vertical shot and we'll see how that looks. The beauty of this tripod and, and, and um, phone holder combo is that I don't need to do anything else. It's already composed. All I'm doing is changing the orientation of the phone. We'll turn this light off and we'll take another photo. Done. Happy with that. Always good to check, especially with when you're dealing with the galactic core, when it's rising, so it's almost vertical, to try different orientations of the photo, landscape and portrait orientation, or as in horizontal and vertical orientation. With this setup that I've got, it's easy enough to do, and I absolutely encourage you to do it when you're out there doing these sorts of photos. Just try both, because this works better than the horizontal one, in my opinion. <clears throat> it's uh, it's 3.32 right now. <laughs> We're gonna do the editing later. I'm gonna go back home and go back to bed. Ripper shot, happy days. Seriously, how good is that photo? I'm absolutely stoked with that. A few things that you need to remember. One, you need to have no light pollution. So get away from the towns, get away from the moon, that sort of thing. Two, you're going to have to have a tripod. There's no way around it. When you shoot handheld doing astrophotography, you don't get nearly as many stars, nearly as much detail in the sky that you want versus having a tripod. All right, let's have a look at the edit of this photo. What we're going to do is put this into Adobe Lightroom. In my opinion, Adobe Lightroom Mobile is the best application that you can use to edit these sorts of photos. There are other applications around, but in my opinion, this one is the best. Here is the photo in Adobe Lightroom. There's a few things that I really like about Adobe Lightroom that other apps just simply don't do. The main one is the dehazing slider. We'll use that in a second. So as I approach any edit on any astro photo, I look at it as a whole first and see what I need to make changes that are global. First thing is it's straight, is it level? So I don't want to have it not level because then my mate Greg McMillan will have a hissy fit and say, don't like that photo because it's not level. So down the bottom of, of Adobe Lightroom, you've got the three, we've got the four, four, five main points there. We'll go to the one that's got the arrows and the cropping tool. Down the bottom here now, on that arc, we're gonna move this just very slightly so that the windmill is vertical. There was a bit of a, you may see on the drone footage there, there's a bit of a hill that the windmill is on, but I think bringing them both together, that's the best way to do it there. Hit the tick. What else don't I like about this photo? Everything, when it comes to astrophotography with iPhones, there's always a bit of haze. So we're going to go to the effects tab first and bring up a little bit of dehazing. Not a great deal, just a little bit. That'll do right there. When we're not sure about what one of these sliders do, I encourage you to go full noise with it all the way to the right, all the way to the left, and you'll see what it does. And then just make small adjustments with that tool. 
I'm gonna increase the clarity a little bit too. The reason I'm doing that is just watch the galactic core, that orange gaseous cloud. Watch what happens with that as I hit this um, dehaze and the clarity tool. See what happens with the clarity with the um, galactic core? You've got to put these two in tune with each other. As I look at this, I go, I want some more contrast. That's over in the light tab. Increase the contrast. It's working all right there. The next bit is the black. Because it's dark, we want to decrease the blacks. So go down to the bottom there and use that slider to decrease the blacks. This is looking pretty damn good right now. There's not much I need to do with the foreground because it's a silhouette photo. As I look at this as a whole still, what do I think this, how do I think this looks? And I'm looking at color, I'm looking at exposure, I'm looking at noise, those three things. First of all, the color, it's too green. So we'll go over to the color tab, go down to the tint, and we'll bring it slightly to the right so it's more of a neutral color. We don't wanna go all the way to that side, just more of a neutral color. And there it is there, I'm happy with that. It's also a little bit cooler, so we'll bring as in when we take these photos, here in Australia at least, it's a little bit cooler. So I'm going to decrease the temperature just a little bit. I think this is looking pretty good. Now if I touch on the photo, touch and hold, there we go, there's the before and after of that photo. All right, let's go over to the effect or the details tab and we'll look at noise and we'll bring the noise reduction up just a little bit and zoom in there and see what it's actually doing. Probably about there is the point that I'm happy with. We'll bring this back out. What I do want to do though is sharpen this photo a little bit. And you might think, why are we sharpening this sort of photo? You can introduce noise, but there's a way around that. I'm gonna bring the sharpening up just a few points. What's that up to 17? And we'll go into the masking slider down the bottom here, grab a hold of the masking slider and then touch on the screen at the same time. And what this is going to do is show you what parts are going to be sharpened. I'm going to put a pretty good mask on this. I don't want too many stars like that. I want to bring it to roughly around there because I want to apply the sharpening to what's in the foreground. And that'll do. That photo is edited. Happy days. If you've taken these sorts of photos and you're looking to share these sorts of photos, head over to our Facebook group, Bloody Legends, uh, on Facebook. I'll put a link down the bottom there. And you can share your photos, get some feedback on the photos that you're taking uh, from a really good online community there. All right, guys, that's it for today. See you next week.